In this video, I'm going to use the Faraday's lab simulation from FED to give you a quick introduction to magnetism. Now, first of all, uh, if we have a permanent magnet, we know that this magnet has two different poles. One is called the North Pole, one we call the South Pole. And similar to when we had charges, opposites attract. So if you have two magnets here, the compass with the north and south and the big permanent magnet with the north and south, the south pole will always be attracted to the north pole. So if I flip here the direction of my permanent magnet, my compass will turn around so that again, north is facing south. Now, what is a bit different uh, with the permanent magnet and charges is that we cannot separate the north and the south pole of a magnet. If you look inside the magnet, it's actually made of uh, several small magnets uh, with each having a north and a south pole. So if I cut the magnet in two, I will actually get two magnets with each having a north and a south pole. And I can continue this cutting until I go down to the molecular level, I will never be able to separate north and south. Now, permanent magnets are not the only type of magnets. We can also create an electromagnet by uh, having current travel in a loop. Now, depending on the direction of the loop, this will create a magnetic field in one direction or the other direction. You see here the compass reacting, and if I change the direction of the current, my compass will flip around as if I had turned my permanent magnet around. Now this fact that moving charges can create a magnetic field uh, can be used to try to explain how the permanent magnet works. Think on the atomer scale. Uh, if we use the planetary model, we have electrons spinning around uh, the nucleus of our atom and therefore, like this call here, creating a magnetic field. It's actually a bit more complicated than that because we have to go to more advanced uh, atomer models, uh, but it still turns out that it is related to the electrons. It's actually the spin of the electrons that create my little uh, magnets on the atomer scale. Now, what happens when we magnetize a material? Initially, uh, these atomer scale magnets were randomly orientated, so overall there was no macroscopic magnetic. Uh, field. However, when we get them to be aligned uh, all with each other, uh, then we get our macroscopic permanent magnet. Not only does a moving charge create a magnetic field, it also works the other way around. Uh, changing magnetic fields can cause charges to move and create a current. So if I take a magnet and I put it next to a coil, if it's stationary, nothing will happen. But if I take the magnet and move it around, you will see I will make uh, the electrons move and create a current. Now, instead of manually wiggling a magnet around, we can build a generator where, for example, we have some water that uh, goes over a wheel and then have a magnet attached to the wheel. And then that turning magnet creates a change in magnetic field, which then in turn will create a current. If you actually observe closely, you will see that the current direction is changing at each turn of the magnet. So this type of generator will not create a direct current where the current is flowing all the time in the same direction, but it will create an alternating current where the current is constantly changing the direction, which is exactly what we have in our power outlets. Eventually, we can take this even a step further. A turning magnet uh, is creating an alternating current. The other way around, an alternating current will cause our magnet to spin. And therefore, we can use this as a base to build the electric motor. 